Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, fellow researchers. I hope that you can hear me loud and clear. My name is Hararabos Georgakis, and I am a PhD candidate and a member of the Lab of Physical Anthropology of Democritus University in Greece. And today, I would like to share with you my presentation, Exploring the Necessity and More Optimal Design for a Centralized Digital Platform for Human Remains Data of Archaeological Significance. So, I would like to begin from a general aspect before getting into the more specific theme. As we know, archaeology as an academic pursuit is committed to the thorough examination of human cultures and historical epochs. How? By employing rigorous methodologies involving the, the meticulous recovery, following with scholarly interpretation of architectural remnants, artifacts, geographical features and biological specimens, or else human remains, Researchers that serve the scientific field of archaeology strive to unveil the intricate tapestry of human development across time. Simultaneously, they endeavor to illuminate the nuanced cultural histories enshrined within diverse human settlements, employing material evidence to bridge and uh, substantiate historical gaps. Henceforth, over the past half century, diverse scientific domains have seamlessly been integrated and progressed in tandem with the established theoretical realm of archaeology. Consequently, the emergence and maturation of fields such as Austroarchaeology have been witnessed. Today, I will be talking about a sub-theme of Austroarchaeology, the recording procedure of human remains, and what we could do about it using technology. If, if I could introduce the field of Austroarchaeology to the audience, I would say that it constitutes the examination of human remains within archaeological settings concerning the identification and retrieval of human skeletal remains in the field, leading to subsequent laboratory analysis. The aim of this kind of research is to contribute to the interpretation of archaeological human findings and introduce innovative perspectives on cultural patterns and processes in historical contexts, wherever that is possible. This can include information about the health, lifestyle, diet, mortality, and physique of individuals that lived in the past. Moreover, osteoarchaeologists may also be able to set light on issues regarding genetic relationships and movement of people. And how can that be accomplished? By using methods designed for specific analysis. And that leads us to the first time that the researcher decided to try an estimation method on human remains. Since then, several methods have been created in him help to analyze and synthesize the biological profiles of past populations. These techniques used by human osteoarchaeologists range from visual examination through measurement of bones and teeth to chemical analysis. Some indicative methodologies that have been applied and continue to throughout the scientific community are these of sex assessment, age estimation, stature measurement, metric and non-metric traits, as well as this used to identify and diagnose possible pathological traits. In recent decades, there has been a global search in investigation into archaeological human remains, propelled by the widespread adoption of methods and innovative techniques for discerning biological and pathological traits. This influx of information has played a pivotal role in advancing the scientific domain of archaeology. However, the size and characteristics of bones among populations tend to differ from place to place and from site to site. Therefore, osteoarchaeologists from every corner of the earth have developed and expanded the use of techniques that could offer a higher rate of accuracy in their studies. Despite notable advancements, the utilization of a diverse array of recording methods found in existing literature hinders the ability to fully harness published data for comparative uh, purposes or potential meta-analysis that could contribute to a more profound understanding of past populations. That's why the need of standardized data collection methodology in osteoarchaeology has been a persistent challenge. So, various initiatives have been devised for the universal recording of osteological data. If I could mention the most important ones, this would be the standards of data collection from human skeletal remains by Buick and Nobileka, and the guidelines to the standards for recording human remains by Brickley and McKinley that offer design forms and tables for Austro-archaeologists to follow and fill in hand. 
most of the data collection has been with a pen and paper, and later on somebody might have tried to digitize them for many years. Following the technological advancements during the last two decades, marked by a digital revolution influencing archaeological surveys, osteoarchaeology has sent a trajectory of development intricately intertwined with and rely on upon applied modern technologies. Consequently, no anthropological laboratory can amass data without recourse to an electronic archive, and no institution can disseminate its research findings without leveraging the capabilities of the web. That's why many attempts have been made in order to create platform databases that could follow standardized osteological data recording, and that is the main purpose of this research, the creation of a centralized digital platform for human remains data of archaeological significance. But before diving into what is needed to be done properly, I would like to mention some of the previous works, which few could agree that stand out from the crowd, and discuss them more in order to do them justice. This is um, Osterware by the Smithsonian Museum of Natural History, Skellipad by Jill Han from University of Reading, and one that was recently designed, Human OS, by researchers from the University of Toulouse and the University of Rennes in France. Each one possesses possesses distinct strengths and weaknesses in different areas such as open access, customization, alignment with researchers' needs, and data storage. Among them, some could work as an installed application, either online and other even without using web connection or installation process, but only as an active hyperlink. I would like to mention some advantages and disadvantages, and later what we plan to do differently and which of the pros and cons could be used in our favor. First of all, the most prominent in the certain community is Osterware, which is a free recording software of human skeletal material that is managed through Smithsonian Museum of Natural History. It is used by biological anthropologists to document data relevant to research and processing application of human skeletal remains in a standardized and consistent way. Most importantly, it has influenced other skeletal recording software and has been successfully used at the Smithsonian of for collecting data relevant to biological anthropology. If we could uh, highlight its pros, Osterware include most used methods since it was created after books and Nobelaki standards for data collection from human skeleton remains. When it was published and began to be used by biological anthropologists as a field in data collection manual, the Smithsonian deemed it necessary to create a digital data entry system that was modeled after the work of these authors. Also, it doesn't need any connection on the internet, as you can be used as a portable application executable file to start up, as well as with the installation, but if up to five individuals may enter data on a network server. It offers the opportunity for real-time data entry of quantitative and qualitative observations. On the other hand, its uh, user interface is that it's quite old, it's hard to use, and the user needs to have a manual most of the time to understand how to use it properly. As a result, new, user, new users tend to avoid working with it. Next one on our list is Skellipad, an application created by Jill Hunt from the University of Reading in order to help osteoarchaeologists record, uh, record skeleton dental inventories, mainly focused using the touch screen of a tablet or a smartphone. Regarding its advantages, it's an um, open access application for Android and iOS. It follows some standard recording data methods influenced by books that enable like uh, standardization and other widely scientifically accepted methods. It can include photographs in case any researcher wants to add one. It includes forms for others and subadults and can be used easily right away. Does it have any disadvantages? Unfortunately, there are some. As um, compared to information on Osterware, Skellipad lacks any other inputs for further introduction information regarding the type of skeleton, site, research, and condition, etc. Documentation of possible pathological traits also is limited since it only refers only options for general pathology such as joint diseases, trauma, and infections. Also, its user interface sometimes seems static and inconvenient. Next platform I would like to mention is HumanOS. This is a larger uh, later addition that has been created by researchers from the University of Toulouse and the University of Rennes as an application which allows 
field anthropologist to record burial cemeteries from archaeological excavations. In comparison with the previous application, Human OS has um, a modern and minimalistic interface, doesn't need interconnection as users could just click on a hyperlink to access the platform. It could be employed from any device, desktop or portable one. Most of actions are a click away. And uh, it uses visual forms to record bones and teeth of adults, adults and infants. Everything seems to be right away with this one. However, it lacks forms for standardized methods regarding estimation of sex, age, stature, and pathology, as it only provides the option for the researcher to enter whichever method has been used and considers acceptable. It could cover mostly needs during excavation and some minus macroscopic research in the laboratory, but most importantly, it does not provide the option for documentation of pathological traits. I think that we need uh, very much. Taking into account everything that uh, has been done so far, the technological advancement that can be traced on these applications and platforms, it was decided to enrich and create an input database from the start. First of all, I would like to state that my main aim of this research and later on development is the creation of a platform database that could be assessed by any researcher in an open access environment. That is why it has been created on, on the web as we strongly believe that anyone should have access to it and use it, store information and download them from anywhere in the world. The platform would have a suitable user interface and user experience so that any researcher could implement uh, his or her analysis easily and feasibly. Thus, the philosophy of minimalism would be afforded and additional guidance would be added wherever it is needed. But most importantly, this project is being created having osteoarchaeologists and biological anthropologists in mind who would employ an analysis in the lab and would advocate for a standardized resource. And uh, since osteoarchaeological research does not include only microscopic research, but also analysis using microscopy, the section of uh, biochemical analysis methods would be introduced. Its methods would consider local and European needs and uh, hopefully in a global scale in the process. So uh, I should present what steps we have followed so far. Yes. And uh, what we have planned to do in the future. Of course, I have added some insights of the work that has been done so far for Osteo Data Lab, the name of the database platform. First of all, we had to consider how we could utilize the advantages of the previous database platforms and minimize the disadvantages. Therefore, an extensive investigation and a bibliographical research that has been carried out. Following this, as the development aims to initially cover the needs of the biological anthropologists and historiologists at the Lab of Physical Anthropology at the Democritus University in Thrace, in Greece, interviews were conducted to evaluate and address their needs. The lab houses researchers specializing in various subfields who could provide guidance on the variables they would like to see and utilize on the database platform. Certainly, several prototypes, prototypes derived from diverse forms and methods have served as foundational elements for subsequent deliberations, guiding the discernment of what to retain and what to discard wisely. The selection of the variables that have been implemented in the database platform has been made according to the above mentioned criteria. Bibliographic database platform has been made according to the above mentioned criteria and uh, the needs of modern-day biological anthropologists, keeping in mind that these variables should incorporate the necessary data, provide sufficient depth in data recording, as well as data sharing, and will be used over a wide range within Greece and hopefully other countries. Furthermore, it is imperative that all variables are imported and designed in a manner which allows researchers to easily register, maintain the use, and refill their data forms. This could be achieved by a user-friendly environment, ensuring fast and efficient data management. Since the main aim of this research is to create an open access platform, it was developed using HTML, CSS, and JavaScript code. Each researcher would be able to create an account and access any past research and analysis, while any data imported on the platform could also be exported in an XML file to store it offline and synchronize the data later to share it with other colleagues. So far, the main environment has been created focusing on major macroscopic analysis such as inventory, logs, sex estimations, age and stage assessment, metric and non-metric dates, 
as well as documentation for possible pathological traits and option for diagnosis. Especially, the last one is a feature we would like to give more attention to. And uh, moreover, what we think could uh, stand out compared to the aforementioned database application that you've been designed is the fact that user will be guided through web wizard pattern or with the co completion of, the da of a data documentation will be guided after saving the data to the next analysis. For example, after filling up the acquired data for sex assessment, will continue for age assessment, age assessment and so on. Of course, there will be an option for the user to exit from the process and then later. The needed variables have been imported on a, an MSQL database that will later use PHP MyAtom for the management. Our ultimate goal is for the final project to be accessible from any device, portable and desktop, that will have internet connection since we want to avoid installations. Even though we want to follow a route of simple ostological acquisition that would make the management and treatment of user population analysis easier, we want to encourage uh, encourage collaborative research that hopefully will advance the practical and technological digitization of biological anthropology. So, to sum up, since we are still in a preliminary stage, we plan to introduce various sections, such as tools for stage 2 estimation, method calculation, biochemical analysis, etc., that have been introduced in the past, that have been introduced in the past. Following mostly the needs of the research that work in the lab, I have commenced developing an extension for the basic core of the Osteo Data Lab. So, to, as we said, to sum up, creating an input database platform for osteoarchaeologists is essential to enhance the efficiency and effectiveness of data storage in their field. Osteoarchaeologists, as we mentioned meticulously, collect and analyze skeletal remains, generating vast amounts of data critical to understanding past populations. Thus, a dedicated input database like Osteo Data Lab will streamline this process by providing a structure and centralized repository for their findings. But most importantly, it will enhance the rapid data entry where time constraints often accompany excavation and analysis. This specialized platform will allow osteoarchaeologists to input and organize data swiftly, reducing the risk of errors and ensuring the preservation of valuable information. Moreover, such a database will facilitate collaboration and knowledge sharing within the osteoarchaeological community fostering a more comprehensive understanding of human history through the study of skeletal remains. In essence, this purpose-built input database platform will be indispensable for archaeologists seeking to manage, access, and contribute to a growing body of knowledge in their discipline. Thank you very much.